ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise Him for His blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of His slaves. We are grateful and thankful for every single thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. Allahumma ameen. Ask Allah azza wa jal to forgive our sins, to make us of those who are pleased with Him and He is pleased with them. Allahumma ameen. And uh, as we talked before, before starting uh, the lecture, that in this month of Sha'ban, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us in this month. There's just only two weeks left for Ramadan. And uh, there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the only hadith which is authentic. A lot of a hadith talking about that issue, they are not authentic. And a lot of people, they take uh, they take this a hadith authentic. The only hadith is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal looks upon his slaves in the, la in the 15th night of Shaban, which is this night, and he forgives all of them except Mushrik, the one who is committing shirk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, associated partners, and Mushahim. And the Mushahim is the one who has conflicts with others. That's one, one understanding. But actually, a lot of scholars from that time, they have said Mushahim, actually, the worst of those who have conflict are those who have bid'ah, people of innovation, who have conflict with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have conflict with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's the, the case. So, and But there is no other thing uh, other than this hadith, which is doesn't mean that we should do something special in this night, doesn't mean that we should pray more uh, during this night or we do something special. No, ask Allah as the forgiveness as you do every night. And alhamdulillah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us to be forgiven, we ask Allah that. In this night, but not special. Alhamdulillah, if you fast 13, 14, 15, as normal, you fast during the week, the the month, monthly, the ayam will be that in uh, white days. Alhamdulillah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, that's a means for forgiving our sins. But no, there is no other thing, special salah or special dua. Or, there is no such a thing from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa A lot of people, they, they do a lot of stuff. So actually, and... If they do a lot of stuff without having an authentic hadith and the lead for that, actually they are included in what? This hadith. When, when the Prophet said, Allah doesn't forgive except two people. The one who is mushrik and the one who has mushahin. And from the salihin before, right? From the tabi'in, they have put the first, what is meant in here, it is meant ahlul bid'a. The, uh, the people of innovation, people who have conflict, and both because as always, that's why we're called Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ahlul Bid'ati wal Furq, wal Ahwa, people of Sunnah and Unity, Jama'ah. People of innovation are called people of innovation and separation, disunity, Ahwa, following their desires. Always you follow your desires, you're going to get in conflict with others. Follow your, follow your desires, you're going to do as what your mind says to you. So, just wanted to uh, remind myself and that ask Allah Azza wa Jal, inshallah, this night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking upon us and we are teaching his book and talking about him subhanahu wa ta'ala, reciting his beautiful words, reciting or reading uh, words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and learning his deen. Inshallah, may Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who are maghfureen, whom maghfureen lakum, then go and leave after you finish and you are forgiven. Allahumma ameen. Last time well, we talked uh, about uh, apostasy in, in Islam and the punishment for that and what is the means and there was a very good question and before starting the last part of the punishments uh, in Islam which is the fighting of the rebels uh, that's like those who want to overthrow the Muslim government and all these things before that I want to answer that question I answer the brother but just for the benefit of that so this question is asked from Muslims and non-Muslims. A lot of non-Muslims actually they ask this question. When they say, for example, that why the Muslim, uh, why in Islam is this uh, punishment for the one who 
changes his deen, his religion, and he becomes a non-Muslim, apostasy. I mean, he, beca he, be he becomes murtad. He changes his deen. Why is this, this punishment death? Don't we have an Islam? La deen. Don't we have an Islam? There is no compulsion in religion. We have that, yes. In Islam, the Quran. La deen. The answer for that is, number one, Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah is not to be questioned about what he does and we are to be asked. And as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah does not wrong anyone. And Allah Azza wa Jal, Aziz, Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa is almighty and the same time all wise. Almighty and the same time Always subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has uh, decided. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we mentioned the hadith of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two is that the ruling that there is no uh, there is no compulsion in religion that has to do even the, the ayah was revealed and the context of that ayah is for the one who we don't force anybody to come to the religion of the first time. There was never narrated any time that the Prophet would uh, make would uh, make uh, would put people into Islam with force, like with safe, with the uh, with a sword, become Muslim, otherwise you're gonna get killed. No, never in the history of Islam. That is not to be done, neither for the Prophet nor from the, the Sahaba and, and his successors after that. That is so. We don't force anyone to come to Islam. We present our evidences. We present the, the deen, how it says. But if the person, he accept religion, knew the religion, he knew what is Islam about, and he uh, he, he uh, had all the, the knowledge regarding it, then he is to come out of Islam because of some, that he's just thinking. That is the case. So there is no more freedom of religion related to that. The freedom of religion, if you choose, person is accepting Islam. Why is that? Number uh, number two, we said that the one who has known the religion has entered it, practiced it, then rejected it, and despised it and left it. Is a, that's to say that this person is the, is like the punish that gets the, uh, the 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 penalty, death penalty, because of that. In Islam, that's what a lot of people they don't understand. Especially non-Muslims. If you are in every state and every country, you have death penalty. For what? Treason. Because that is the highest value that uh, the, 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 these countries they have. In Islam, the highest value, the, the, the highest priority in Islam is what? Religion. Highest priority is religion. So th that is the case by leaving Islam. That's another by leaving Islam, the person who he was Muslim and then he uh, committed a uh, irtidad uh, or apostasy. He is opening a way for everyone to leave Islam. Thus spreading apostasy and encouraging it. He is opening the way for everybody. As we mentioned before, we have like five goals of Sharia. And number one is protecting the religion. And because of that, for each and every goal that Allah Azawajal wants to protect, has put what? Has put a had. Uh, and uh, that uh, a punishment for that in order for people not to pass that boundary and not to transgress that boundary to preserve what always Islam looks at the general interest common interest for everybody not individual for everybody if a person uh, actually what the, the Jews they said in the Quran they said that, that make them or become Muslim in the, uh, in the beginning of the day and leave Islam at the end of the day. Why? Because that will make people, what is this deen that people are just coming Muslim in one day and next day they are uh, leaving, abandoning Islam. So it put people into diet, doubt because of that. The other thing is that, as we mentioned, the one who committed apostasy is not to be killed right away. First of all, it's not to be killed by every person, just individual like that. Second is in, in a Muslim state, not everywhere in this uh, person. So even if that's Muslim state or Islamic state, real Islamic state that is abiding by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all this that we mentioned before, that is the government who takes care of the, the rule of the Khalifa. First, 
Then the second is not to be killed right by, by warning. It's to be given advice, to be given time to repent. Three days. Some scholars, they actually they say more than three days. Just to repent. What only just repent? No, teaching him, uh, trying, you have any doubts, clarifying the, 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 the doubts uh, that he has in Islam, just uh, having shafaqah and rahmah for him, not only just, or oh, you uh, committed apostasy. Maybe he has some, something, I mean, confusion. So let me clarify this confusion. So he's, he's given time for him to repent. Then after, after that, he's on. Then there's another type. It's called like lesser apostasy and greater apostasy. Lesser apostasy, the person, he just accepted Islam or, or he was a Muslim and he left Islam and nobody knew about that. He's in himself there. Right. It is between him and Allah Azza wa Jalla. Nobody's going to go and, and, and check, anywhere, especially if they don't know, like catch him and kill him. But the person who has that, farraq al mufarraq al the one who really uh, declared publicly and is uh, against or is, is trying to uh, to uh, talk about Islam and about the, against, uh, and he's trying to make fitna and talk. These are this is greater apostasy, if you can say like that. That's that, that is the what is really meant for the uh, the the head of the ridda. And just be true to yourself. If this hukum was there, how many people would, would com commit apostasy? The same thing like the the ruling of theft, like the head of theft was there. How many people would do that? Had of zina. How many people would do that? If just only a few, and then the rest of the society would would learn. If obviously this is a society who, who abides by Islam, not the, these rulings don't come in one night, and that's it. You can't apply like that. The same thing. Omar Ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, the had of theft. Yani the 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 ruling for the the, the theft that uh, the, the hand be be chopped for the. We, we talked about that, the shurut, the conditions. He did not apply, he applied in the, in the year of Ramadan, the year of hunger. They were saying that, how do you leave the head of Allah Azra without applying? Because there was no condition to be applied. People are hungry. People were in dire need. And so they, they were forced kind of to, to steal. If it was that the society, the, the Khalifa, the, the state would... would uh, made everything that the life good for them, they would not go to that. So the same thing, you're trying to, we can apply in one day, day and night, all this hukm and these rulings. So that was one. The other thing is, if the punishment for murder and espionage, also known as a high treason, is death, then what should be the punishment for the one who disbelieves in Lord of mankind, despises and rejects his religion? And according, this is according to a Muslim who really realizes that their religion is number one priority. If espionage or shedding blood worse than leaving the, uh, the religion of the Lord and mankind they're rejecting, is that uh, worse or less? So none of those who talk about personal freedom or, or freedom of belief would put up with a neighbor's child, hitting their child, or justify it as a personal freedom. Nobody. It's my child. Why do you hit him? But how can they justify leaving the true religion and rejecting the Sharia, which Allah revealed to teach mankind about his unity and bring justice and fairness to all of them? How can that? So Allah is all, is all wise. These are some of the wisdoms behind that. But obviously, as we said, it is there are conditions, there are timing, circumstances, and how it is to be applied. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not wrong anyone subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was in regard to that question. Yeah, I, my question is, is that mentioned in the Quran? Yes, it is for the, what is mentioned in Quran? What do you mean? Uh, uh, the, uh, the word apostasy. Who would like to uh, reject uh, his religion and to change them? In Quran Hadith. That's the Quran Hadith of the Prophet. We believe in the Hadith of the Prophet. So yeah, everything yeah. that comes to authentic Hadith, it is... Uh, it, it is approval of the Quran. So uh, that one, that the ayah, la ikra fi din, as we said, the tafsir of it and the the reason of revelation, it is on the people that they don't have uh, that before accepting Islam, before accepting Islam. So that's what the scholars have, have been uh, put in like uh, in uh, a concordance and it together, combining between the ayat on this situation. 
before accepting Islam and the a hadith, for example, in that uh, after a person he leaves Islam uh, after knowing knowing that. So everything is in, and this is all that the scholars from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala only nowadays some some people they just want to uh, try to to uh, water down the religion and they they say oh it's not in Islam this it's not in Islam that and taking and uh, taking things from the Islam but it if you understand it is true why we are not doing this in US can just clarify that for everybody why we are not doing this in this country well, as, as we said, I and mean, first of all, we, we, uh, who has uh, like we are here, uh, we don't have the, the ruling. There's another Islamic state and a ruling, even in other Muslim states. I and mean, to uh, abide and to apply all of, of this, this is one the Islamic like, was Islamic state with a Khalif and everything, a leader that uh, they apply. Number one, and uh, number two, as we said, it is not individuals. It's you are not allowed to uh, to uh, be to uh, harm a person, let alone to kill to kill him, and yani without any hak and any, any right. So that is for the Muslim ruler and Muslim governor, not to individuals, to to the individuals. As I said, the same thing. Even if you had the ruling and and, and the the hukum of the ruling, you are uh, apply or obliged to. Call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come back to Allah as well, to revert, to tell people to accept Islam. But uh, you are not uh, you are not sent as a judge on the people because you don't have that authority. This is only the Muslim rulers that have the authority. Neither me, neither you, nobody else. Only the Muslim rulers. If they are ruling the country with Islam. So it's it's not for us. We are learning these because it's, it's, the, it's a part of the fiqh. We need to, to learn. Doesn't mean that everything we learn it, that that's going you, you're gonna apply it and without even when you have to apply it you have to apply it by knowledge and the circumstances are to be applied. The other uh, thing that was regarding your question, uh, the other thing uh, was qitalu ahlul baqi the the fighting of the rebels who go against the Muslim uh, who they want to throw the Muslim uh, gov government and or Khalifa. وجوب نصب خليفة للناس قال الله عز وجل وإذا قال وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة remember when your lord told the angels I'm gonna make a khalifa on earth uh, that was uh, the mankind that خليفة they come in succession generation after generation and they are leaders and that they will build this earth القطبي he says this ayah it is an asl it is a foundation as an evidence for putting a khalifa or imam, a leader, that he has to be obeyed and has to be listened to. And why is to be put? In order that everybody is united in one word and all the rulings are to be obeyed by the khalifa. Otherwise, if everybody uh, does whatever he, he wants, if you don't, we don't have a state, we don't have a khalifa, you have a leader, that everybody is going to be chaos and everybody want, does whatever he wants. If you don't have a leader, Imagine like we don't have imam. Everybody prays. What's the jama'a pray? The, the one starts before, the other one starts later after. There is no jama'a in them. So that's the, the case for the same thing for the state or the country. So, and there is no khilaf. There is no uh, contradiction between the scholars regarding that it is a wajib, mandatory obligation for the ummah to have a khalifa or a leader that all the aimas except al-asam, mu'tazili, that he was really even the the word the last name al asam means the death. He really really was deaf from the Sharia. He says, He really he was deaf from the Sharia and from not understanding the Sharia. Whoever followed him, so all of the Mathaib, all the, the, the Imams, uh, they have agreed that it's obligation obligation duty to have an Imam or Khalifa. Allah Azza says, In Nijailu fil Ardi Khalifa, he said. Or Allah says, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifan fil ard. O Dawood, alayhi salam, we made you as a khalifa and leader on earth. Wa'ad Allah, who led in Aman, who minkum, who amil salihat, and estakhlifan nahum fil ard. Allah Azawajal has promised those who have believed among you and they have done good deeds, believing, doing good deeds, lestakhlifan nahum fil ard. It will give them authority on earth, make them khalifan leaders on earth. 
and we make them successors to one another in generations, like uh, having authority on earth. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala, they made uh, ujma, unanimity, to make Khalifa who first? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. After the Khilaf, there was Khilaf, there was contradiction. Who to put as a Khalifa? Ansar and Muhajirin. The Ansar, they said, then we find one Emir from us and one Emir from you, from Muhajirin. That was before Abu Bakr Siddiq was, uh, was to be uh, chosen and appointed as Khalifa. Abu Bakr and Umar, then Muhajirin, they stopped them and said, Inna al-Arab la tadinu illa li al hayy min al Quraysh. Indeed, the Arabs, they don't submit themselves except to this uh, uh, this tribe from the Quraysh. That's why the Khalifa was from, to be from the Quraysh. And they told the boss that the Al Khabar, they talked about the, the those news from the Quraysh for that. And then they stepped back and they obeyed the Quraysh. If it was not wajib, if it was not obligatory, neither the Quraysh or from somebody else, then what was the discussion for? If it was not obligatory uh, obligation to have a Khalifa, why they were discussing for? So it doesn't make any sense. So the, nobody would say, oh, it's obligation or not. doesn't matter. You put Khalifa or not, it's okay. No, because that they, uh, they were arguing regarding that means that that was an obligation to have a Khalifa. Then Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he was about to pass away, he gave the, uh, the leadership to who? Umar al-Khattab, he chose and appointed Umar al-Khattab. And nobody, he said, oh, this is, it's for us or for somebody else, an obligation for us. That, that tells us that it was an obligation for the, to, to find the Khalifa. And this is one of the arkan al deen one of the pillars of the deen that the structure of the Muslims and Islam is built upon. The obligation of following the commandments of the Emir or the Khalifa that Allah subhanahu wa says, Ya ladina amanu, Allah wa Rasul wa uli al amri minkum. All you who believe, follow the commandments of Allah, obey Allah and obey His Messenger, وسلم, and uli al amri minkum, those who are uh, like the uli al amr from the khulaf, that's the, the scholars and the governors, both as we mentioned before in some other hadith. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi man ata'ani faqad ata'a Allah, wa man asani faqad asa Allah, wa man yuti'i al-amira faqad ata'ani, wa man ya'si al-amira faqad asani. Whoever obeys me, he has obeyed Allah. Whoever disobeys me, has disobeyed Allah. Wa man yuti'i al-amir, whoever obeys the amir, the leader, the khalifa, the governor, the king, whatever it is nowadays, فَقَدْ أَطَاعَنِي Indeed, he has obeyed me. وَمَنْ يَعْصِ الْأَمِيرِ Whoever disobeys the Amir or the leader, he has disobeyed me. Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه قال أو أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال على المرء المسلم السمع والطاعة فيما أحب أو كره إلا أن يؤمر بمعصية فإن أمر بمعصية فلا سمع ولا طاعة He says, صلى الله عليه وسلم Upon the Muslim, it is the obligation of hearing and obeying, even if he even if he likes it or doesn't like whatever the ruling is for him or the commandment is for him. Except if he is to be obeyed for to commit a ma'asiya or a sin. If he is commanded to do something which is sin, he doesn't hear, he doesn't obey, meaning that he rejects that, be that even from the Khalifa. And Abi Hurair Allah Ta'ala. عن قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليك السمع والطاعة في عسرك ويسرك ومن شط من شطك وبكرهك وأثر أت عليك وأثرة عليك said عليك you have an obligation to hear and obey in your difficulty or in the times of ease ومن شطك if you are energized meaning that this something is benefits you ومكرهك even if you don't like it وأثرة عليك and even if they are giving preference to themselves or, or others over you. Somebody say, okay, I'm, I'm doing my part, my part, but what about this Khalifa or what about this king or th this uh, president of, of mine, Muslim country? He is, uh, he is wronging me. He's taking my rights. He's not giving my rights. What should I do? The same uh, question was asked to the Prophet, which we don't have to answer from our pockets. 
from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi ibn Hujr qala sa'ala Salamat ibn Yazid al-Ju'fi radiyallahu anhu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Salamat ibn Yazid al-Ju'fi asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qala ya Nabi Allah O Nabi Allah أرأيت إن قامت علينا أمراء يسألون حقهم ويمنعون حقنا فما تأمرنا يا رسول الله وما سنجف ونبي الله What do you think if أمراء leaders are on authority they have authority over us and they are asking for to give them their rights يعني to be to hear them or obey them and they stop us from taking our rights يعني they don't give us our rights فَمَا تَأْمُرُنَا What do you command us to do? What should we do? فَأَعْرَضَ عَنُهُ Prophet Zahazim, he turned his back. He didn't answer him. Then he, he asked him again. Then سَأَلُهُ Another time, Prophet Zahazim, he turned his back. Didn't answer him. Then سَأَلَ فِي الثَّانِيَ وَالثَّالِثِ The third time. فَجَذَبُهُ وَأَشْعَضُ بِنْ قَيْسِ And أَشْعَضُ بِنْ قَيْسِ took him on the side. فَقَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم When he heard that third time. اسمعوا وأطيعوا فإنما عليه ما حملوا وعليكم ما حملتم. Hear and obey. Indeed, for them or is is whatever they have been uh have been taken the responsibility and whatever they taken as a sin they take it. And you have to give your rights and whatever you're gonna be responsible for that. Each one is gonna be responsible. Now the hadith Abdullah Masood رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنها ستكون بعد أثرة وأمور تنكرونها. Indeed, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is like Subhanallah is describing for them the same what's happening nowadays and what happened after. For them, especially those who lived in the time of the Prophet and lived after, it was like really like a miracle has the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed them and they were looking and seeing what the Prophet told them. إنها ستكون بعد أثرة وأمور تنكرونها. Indeed, after me, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There will be athara. Athara, yani, meaning that those emirs or leaders, they will take advantage of you. They will take advantage. They will take maybe all the the money, the walls. They will keep it for themselves. They don't want to give it you to you. Umur and tukiruna, and then things that you will you will not uh, like it. You will you will reject it. These things. قالوا يا رسول الله كيف تأمر من من أدرك ذلك من يعني يا أم سنجر في الله how do you command what do you tell any one of us who reaches that time قال تؤدون الحق الذي عليكم وتسألون الله الذي لكم you fulfill the rights of them over you and ask Allah to fulfill your right again or over them ask Allah to give you rights you do your part, at least. Why? Because not to be a chaos, not to be a problem and a conflict and what we see in Muslim world. And Awf ibn Malik radiallahu anhu qala sami'tu Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Look at this. He said, I heard the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qiyaru a'immatikum alladhina tuhibbunahum wa yuhibbunakum. The best of your leaders are those whom you love them and they love you. وَتُصَلُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَيُصَلُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ Make dua for them and then make dua for you. وَشِرَارُ أَئِمَّتِكُمْ أَلَّذِينَ تُبْغِضُونَهُمْ وَيُبْغِضُونَهُمْ And the worst of your leaders are those whom you hate them and they hate you. تَلْعَنُونَهُمْ وَيَلْعَنُونَكُمْ You curse them and they curse you. قُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا نُنَابِذُهُمْ عِنْدَ ذَلِكُ We said, يَا مَسَنْجَرَ فَ should we should not we kick them out? Yeah, and take them out with uh, with swords with, uh, that fight them so we can kick them out of the office. Huh? Prophet said, La ma aqamu fikum as salat. As long as they pray or they uh, make easy, they, they make easy the prayer for you, meaning they build the masajid, they let the, the adhan to be called, people that are going to the masajid. They have the salawat and everything. They made easy for you with the salah. لا ما أقام فيكم الصلاة three two times. صلى الله عليه وسلم. ألا من ولي عليه والي. Indeed, the one who a wali an emir is put on on over him in authority. فرآه يأتي شيء من معصية الله. And he sees him doing something which is a معصية, something which is a sin. Ah, so nowadays they see our king is doing. Look what he does. Astaghfirullah, maybe he, he commits zina, or maybe he drinks alcohol. This happened, Muslim world. Yeah? They're not angels. I'm not defending them. What was the Prophet saying? 
and he sees his emir that he is dying, doing something which is ma'asiyah. فَلْيَكْرَهْ مَا يَأْتِي مِنْ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Let him hate whatever that sin is that is, the person is doing, the emir or the leader. وَلَا يَنْزِعَنَّ يَدًا عَنْ طَعَى مِنْ طَعَى And let him not he take his hand, his hand from the pledge he given, meaning that let him not rebel against them and let him not talk uh, against them in, in public. That's what it means. مَنِ الْإِمَامَ الَّذِي تَجِبُ طَعَةُ Who is the imam that... We're supposed to obey, obviously, you're talking Muslim uh, land and country. Whoever is, uh, is uh, his imam or his leadership is recognized, it is not allowed and it's haram to go against them and rebel against them, like the khawarij, the khuruj. Number one, how is the person to be Khalifa? With Ijma, like Abu Bakr Siddiq, even be that person like Khalifa, like Abu Bakr Siddiq, with Ijma, all the Muslims they agreed upon. Or the Ahdin, or the Khalifa let him, like Umar al Khattab was let, or, or he was appointed by the Khalifa. Abu Bakr Umar. Or the Ijtihad, like the, the people of the Shura. They agreed to appoint somebody, like in the time of Omar al-Khattab, he led the people, six people, to choose and appoint one. And they chose who? Uthman ibn Affan, like Shura. In that time, it was six people. Nowadays, it can, can be 100 people, 50, uh, like, 200 people, 300, like a senate, like parliament, kind of. Mashura, Shura. Like. And that, or the, even the last point. You see, then even al-imam or al-ghalib, الغالب الذي غلب على الناس بقهره أو بقهر even the, the person who took the, the power with force he took the power with, by force he was forced to be the Khalifa even in this case his uh, Khilafat or his leadership is recognized you have to hear and obey why was the, why is the reason for not to make disunity and not to, to shed blood of the Muslims. That is the, the purpose. So all of these situations, that's said, من غلب عليهم بالسيف حتى صار خليفة وسمي أمير المؤمنين فلا يحل لأحد يؤمن بالله أو يبي أن يبيت ولا يراه إماما برا كان أو فاجرا. So that's Imam Ahmad. He says, whoever, even the person, the خليفة, is put, he gained authority over the people, over the Muslims, by sword, meaning by, uh, by force, he gained authority by force. He pushed himself to be the Khalifa. It's not, and he is considered like a Khalifa or Amir Mu'minin, the leader of the believers. La yahillu, nobody. It is allowed to go against him and to not see as an to not see him as an Imam. Be that a person a righteous one, or be that a person a corrupt one. Even in this case, what is the purpose behind? As we say, the purpose is behind to not spread or spill. The blood of the Muslims. لو تغلب كل سلطان على ناحية كزماننا فحكمه كالإمام. And nowadays is the same. Nowadays, every country, every every country, they have they have their own king, they have their own president. There is no Khalifa, huh? as the Prophet mentioned. What did he mention, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That first we're going to be Nubuwa, as much as Allah would would let the Nubuwa prophecy prophet to be. Then after the Nubuwa, it will be Khilafa. على 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 نبوة the خلافة that is following the 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 example of the prophet which is the خلفاء الراشدين أربعة then is going to be kingdomship was good in the beginning then was going to be is going to be kingdomship it doesn't matter only kingdomship it could be presidency whatever the ruling that is like tyranny or oppression at the end Prophet Bashar, the end of this is going to come Khulafa, Khalifa. The Khilafa, inshallah, even until before the day of the judgment, he didn't mention it's going to go uh, after, after that. There is nothing left. It's only the Khilafa that will come before the day of the judgment. Uh, that's what's uh, from the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll stop here, inshallah, ta'ala, uh, because we we got the question of the brother. It took, uh, but it's it's good to be explained. Alhamdulillah for everybody. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us beneficial knowledge. Ask Allah Azza wa to forgive us 
and uh, to forgive our sins and to grant us to his pleasure in dunya and hereafter. Allahumma ameen. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inna kunna minal dhalimeen. Sallallahu wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanak Allahumma ameen. Shadun la ilaha illa anta subhanak wa tawbili. Thank you.